Okay, and I would like to introduce Andrew Tokmakov, and he's going to talk about gamification in Wild Orchid Watch today. Thank you. Yep, thanks. And just to remind everybody, we have six minutes per talk, and then at the end there will be another 30 minutes for questions. Yep. I'll give you a one minute. Okay, great. So, yeah, I'm Andrew and um, Robert Lawrence and Ben Sparrow is over there, co-authors of this presentation. Um, what I'm going to talk about is gamification and Wild Orchid Watch. There's a workshop on gamification happening right now elsewhere, so um, you won't be getting that. Um, and Wild Orchid Watch is going to be introduced in a different talk elsewhere as well, so I won't spend too much time on that. I'll focus on um, an intro to it and the essence of what we're going to do with gamification in Wild Orchid Watch. So what is Wild Orchid Watch? Again, you'll find out more in the other presentation, but ultimately it's a citizen science project that started last year, um, roughly in the middle of the year, uh, focused on collecting, re uh, recording and disseminating scientific information on Australian native orchids. Um, so there's been many so citizen science projects. This one's focused on orchids. Um, it was basically created in the establishment with the Native Orchid Association in SA. Um, so what are we going to actually do inside that project? Well, as with all projects, we've got an app that's pretty standard business. Um, our app will be doing three things. First one is to basically allow um, a keyed uh, taxonomic um, description mechanism happening there. So this is, this is a, um, pretty common in ecology. And then we'll have some guided photography as well. So we'll be basically be guiding people about taking photos of leaves and side shots and all that sort of thing to get decent pictures of these orchids. Um, and then there's also some associated habitat information um, which we'll be collecting and also, of course, GPS data about where these uh, shots are being taken and the sightings. Um, and then connected with that, of course, there's a database um, which will have all of the information that's collected and we'll be curating that and then connecting that to Turn's ECOS information system. In the previous talk, um, there was a lot of projects that were coming up and obviously there's a need to collect that data and that's where we'll be putting ours. Um, a web interface for the citizen scientists to actually look at what's been collected and actually perform identifications as well. So this would be a bit like the Digivol setup where the volunteers actually do IDs. Um, and then, of course, if you're going to do citizen science, well, it's one thing to collect the data, but you have to do something with it afterwards. Um, so we're having some postgrad research making use of that collected data to look into biodiversity and uh, environmental change. Um, and essentially the point here is that um, orchids are a canary in the coal mine and when they change ecology changes as well. So we're using that as, a, as an interesting point to, to study further. Um, yeah, so what's gamification? Um, so it's a design tool, that's a critical thing. It's, 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 a, it's a tool that you use when you're creating systems. Um, essentially the idea is to enhance the user experience basically by taking aspects from gaming and pulling it into your non-gaming uh, context. Um, you see in the diagram there, um, you're taking gamification mechanisms and then you end up using them to get a psychological outcome, and that psychological outcome then results in a behavioural outcome. So this has been studied reasonably well. It's, it's recognised as a mechanism that works. Um, it's actually been looked into in the citizen science mechanism as well, and uh, it's been shown to work. So why would we bother doing it in citizen science? Well, there's some intrinsic and extrinsic motivations which we know that people have in citizen science. The intrinsic ones are potentially things like, um, you know, making themselves... Um, be, be the best collector in a group or something like that. And extrinsic ones may be more like, oh, I feel I need to contribute to society and to make the environment better. So we know that these, these um, motivations exist and we basically leverage them and try and push them a bit harder. Um, and like I said, it's been shown to increase the motivation engagement. And this is a really critical thing in citizen science. If you, when you release a system, people go, yeah, that's great. And you get your early adopters and you get the, the fast track folk. And then over time it kind of drops off and people get less interested. So gamification is a way to try and keep people engaged and retain them and actually get higher quality outputs and more of them. Um, some people have raised concerns about gamification in this context and they've said, oh, well, you know, doesn't it dilute things? Doesn't it make it a bit, you know, are you, are you just playing games? Um, and that's probably a fairly reasonable question. I guess ultimately what needs to be taken into account is that um, the gamification mechanisms you put in place need to provide outcomes and not necessarily get games themselves. So you end up people gaming your system to get the points and therefore doing the wrong thing. So what do we do in uh, Wild Orchid Watch? So we're going to be gamifying to do four things. Um, encouraging collection where it's needed. So we don't want to necessarily have people just running around willy-nilly collecting whatever they feel like. We want to direct them into spaces and say, look, these are the things we need collected. So this is, we're going to use that as a mechanism. 
Uh, we want to discourage oversampling of sensitive areas. So apparently these orchids can be wiped out when you get troves of people running through to have a look at them. So we'll make use of this as a mechanism to essentially tell people stay away from these areas. We don't want you to destroy it. Um, increasing the quality and quantity of the collected data. So as I said, the, the literature indicates that you can increase quality and quantity using these mechanisms. So we'll be doing that. Um, and indeed, there are engagement and retention. Like I said, if we don't have retention, then all of our science, citizen scientists will drop off and do something else, and we don't want that. So here's an infographic which sort of captures a lot of those things. On the left, you see some common mechanisms that are used, and on the right, you see some ways to drive engagement. Um, so in the context of our um, Wild Orchid Watch, we'll be making use of points, so you collect points as you participate. So as you're doing things, you will be collecting points as you go along. Um, badges, so this is sort of rewarding, um, let's say, achievements. So as you actually achieve certain things, you'll get a badge for that. Um, levels, so unlocking levels as well. So as you advance through these levels, you're going to get more options. So you might be trusted, for example, to go to places where other people aren't because you've shown that you're able to um, collect responsibly. Uh, leaderboards, compare yourself with others. Again, that goes back to some of those intrinsic, extrinsic um, motivation mechanisms. Some people really enjoy finding where they are on a leaderboard. Challenges, so this is then again about directing people to get to certain spots and to make sure that uh, they collect the data that we want them to do in the context of the studies. Accelerated feedback cycles. Um, you don't want to have a situation where people submit data and they don't hear anything for ages. It needs to be um, quickly, re quickly acted upon such that people feel that their stuff is being used. Uh, clear goals, well, let's make it simple. Keep it nice and easy. If it's too complicated, then no one's going to be interested at all. Uh, compelling narrative, well, these orchids, as an indicator of biodiversity research, is quite a compelling one, at least for me, and I think probably for a lot of folk as well. And the last one about tuning and maintaining tasks uh, to make sure that it's not too tricky for people. And we'll do that over time. We'll find out as we go along. So the take-home messages are gamification increases engagement and retention in citizen science applications. The literature tells us that. Um, so we're designing this in now at the design phase, at the start of the project. And then we're going to make use of those known uh, approaches, as we said, and then we'll innovate as we go along. And who knows what we come up with. That's it. Safety question.